Okay. The square root property of equality says if you have x squared equals a number, n, if you have something squared equals a number, if, then to solve for x, it's always going to be plus or minus the square root of that number. So you have two answers. One is going to be positive and one is going to be negative. That's really what the square root property of equality. That only works. This method can only be used when you have something squared equals a number. So let's take a look at some examples and see how we're going to use it. If I have x squared equals 49, that fits that. It fits this one. This method said then x will be plus or minus the square root of 49. And the square root of 49 is 7, so you have two answers. One of them is negative 7, comma, the other one is 7. So there are two solutions. x equals negative 7, comma, 7. Negative 7 squared, that's 49. 7 squared, that's also 49. Or if I have 3x squared equals 24. Now again, you can only use this method if you have x squared. Well, the 3 is not squared, so that's a problem. So to fix that quickly, we divide both sides by 3. If I divide by 3, I have what? x squared equals 8, and now that fits that look. Since it matches that, x will have to be plus or minus the square root of 8. And now we know how to simplify square root. 8 is what? 4 times 2. So this will be plus or minus the square root of 4 times the square root of 2. And what is the square root of 4? That's 2 times the square root of 2. So you have two solutions. One of them is negative 2, the square root of 2. The other one to the square root of 2. Here's a little warning. Do not, do not put them in parentheses. Once you put them in parentheses like this, you're saying this is actually a single point. This is the x value, that's the y value. That's not what we're saying. We're saying it's two x values. We have two answers for x, so don't use these parentheses there. Once you do that, you just change the whole problem. Let's try another one. Nine plus 16 t squared equals zero. Again, that doesn't look like this. Let's see if we can make it look like this. Move the nine there, becomes a negative nine. I still have the 16 here. So let me divide both sides by 16. I have t squared equals negative 9 over 16, which means t will be plus or minus the square root of negative 9 over 16. Let's stop and look at this. Can you take the square root of a negative number? No. So because this number is negative, see that negative sign? That tells you you can't take the square root of a negative number. No solution to this problem. Can't. Can't be done. If you try that on a calculator, it will give you an error. Let me try another one similar to that. 25 minus 81 t squared equals to 0. Again, let's see if we can make it look like that form there. Take the negative 81 to that side, becomes positive. Now, I want that to be t squared, so let me divide this side by 81, and this is by 81. So now I have t squared 
equals what? 25 over 81. Now that does fit the form. X squared equals a number. T squared equals a number. That means T will be plus or minus the square root of 25 over 81. And we know you can break it down. The square root 25 is 5. The square root of 81, that's 9. So plus or minus negative, I mean plus or minus 5 over 9. So one solution is negative 5 over 9. The other solution is positive 5 over 9. We have two answers. Okay, let's make it a little bit bigger now. X plus 3 squared equals 16. Again, you have something square equals a number. That means x plus 3 without the square has to equal to plus or minus the square root of 16. We're using the same rule. This without the square should equal that. Well, what is the square root of 16? So x plus 3 equals plus or minus 4. Now remember, I need to solve it for x, not x plus 3. So to get rid of that plus 3, we need to subtract 3 from both sides. So I will have x equals, now I have two solutions. One of them, when I use the plus, plus 4 minus 3. And the other one, when it's negative 4 minus the 3. What is plus 4 minus 3? That's plus 1. What's negative 4 minus 3? Negative 7. Two solutions to that one. Let's say we have three times, another example here, x minus 5 squared equals 18. Again, I'm trying to match that form. The form says if you have, if x squared equals a number, then x equals plus or minus the square root of that number. That's what the equation I'm trying to use. The 3 is not squared, so I got a little issue with that 3 here. So to, to get rid of that, I need to divide this side by 3, which means divide this by 3. Because when you do that, it cancels that 3 there. So I will have x minus 5 squared equals, what is 18 divided by 3? 6. Now I'm going to use that method. I have something square equals a number. That tells me that x minus 5 without the square has to equal to plus or minus the square root of 6. And I really can't simplify the square root of 6. Not much I can do to it. I always want to solve for x. So the negative 5 has to come to this side. And I like to put it in the front, not at the end. Just me personally. That means x equals... When I change side, I change sign. The negative 5 comes here, becomes a plus 5, plus or minus the square root of 6. So I have two solutions. The first one, it's 5 minus the square root of 6. And the second one, 5 plus the square root of 6. These are my answers. Five minus the square root of six and the other one five plus the square root of six.
Let's try another one similar to that. 4 times x plus 4 squared equals 8. Again, I need to divide this side by 4 and this side by 4 to get rid of this one. x plus 4 squared equals 8 divided by 4, which is 2. Now again, I have something squared equals a number. I'll use that rule there. x plus 4 equals plus or minus the square root of 2. I can't simplify the square root of 2, but I can take the plus 4 to this side. When you take it there, it changes to a negative. x equals negative 4 plus or minus the square root of 2. So one solution is minus 4 minus the square root of 2, and the second solution, negative 4 plus the square root of 2. And you can't add these two. One has a square root, one doesn't. And the other reason you can't add them is you can't add square roots. Square root of 3 plus square root of 5, you can't add them. So you got to stop right there. Let's make it a little bit bigger than this. Four m minus one squared equals fifty four. Solve for m. Solve for m. I already have something squared equals a number. That tells me four m minus one is equal to plus or minus the square root of 54. And I need to see if I can simplify the square root of 54. 54 is what? Isn't that 9 times 6? So it's the square root of 9 times the square root of 6. And what is the square root of 9? That's a 3, the square root of 6. Next, the minus 1 here. I need to add 1 to both sides to get rid of that minus 1. I can't add the 1 to the 4, I mean to the 3 to make it a 4. The 3 have a square root. So the 1 has to stay by itself. So it's 1 plus or minus 3 the square root of 6. And now to solve for m, I'm going to divide this side by 4 and that side by 4. So that's what m is equal to. 1 plus or minus 3 times the square root of 6 over 4. Again, two solutions. The first one it's 1 minus 3 the square root of 6 over 4. And the other one, comma, 1 plus 3 the square root of 6 over 4. Another one like this, 3x plus 1 squared equals 18. So 3x plus 1 without the square has to equal to plus or minus the square root of 18. 3x plus 1 equals plus or minus 18 is 9 times 2. 3x plus 1 equals plus or minus the square root of 9, which is what? 3, the square root of 2. 
Now again, I need to move that plus one to this side. When you change side, you change sign. So that becomes 3x equals, when you take the plus one, becomes a minus one, plus or minus three the square root of two. And now to solve for x, we're gonna divide both sides by three. x equals minus 1 plus or minus 3 the square root of 2 over 3. Now if you're watching this video and thinking I can cancel the 3 with that 3, think again. You can't. That's a plus or minus. You can't simplify. That has to be multiplications. I know this is times this, but it has to be multiplication by the whole thing. So you cannot cancel this 3 with this 3. So you have two solutions. One of them is minus 1 minus 3 the square root of 2 over 3. And the other one minus 1 plus 3 the square root of 2 over 3. Let's try a couple more examples here. Here we go, solve for x. This is what we have. x minus five equals three over x minus 5. We have this equation. We want to solve it. I'm not really a fan of fractions, so I'm going to multiply both sides of the equation by x minus 5 to get rid of this one. And notice this cancels that. So now I end up with x minus 5 times x minus 5 equals 3, which I can write as x minus 5 squared equals 3. Now that matches the look I'm interested in. That means x minus 5 has to equal to plus or minus the square root of 3. Take the minus 5 to this side, change sign, change sign x equals plus 5 plus or minus the square root of 3. So I can write that as two solutions. One of them is 5 minus the square root of 3. The other one 5 plus the square root of 3. Okay, that's the end of this section.